AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, passion for excellence. Here are today's top headlines. Suppliers are asking Uncle Sam for bailouts. China faces a major consolidation of its automakers and Bolivia could pose problems in getting lithium to make batteries. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Thursday, February 5, 2009, and now the news. The Wall Street Journal reports that automotive suppliers have asked the U.S. government for $25.5 billion in aid. However, the AP reports they have not made a formal request and are still in discussions. The Motor Equipment and Manufacturers Association, or MEMA, warns that the auto industry will collapse without aid to suppliers. It points out that 40 suppliers filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy last year. And there's no question that many others are teetering on the brink right now. U.S. Senators Dianne Feinstein of California and Olympia Snow of Maine have asked the Energy Secretary to set a timeline for distributing the $25 billion in loans for the big three to retool to produce fuel-efficient vehicles. Reuters reports the Senators argue automakers need the money to afford retooling especially given the current economy. And the senators say this would allow them to better plan for retooling. And talking of companies going out of business, the journal says the auto industry in China is about to go through major consolidation. There are at least 80 different car companies in China, most of them very low volume producers. They've been able to thrive due to China's booming car market, but the boom is coming off the rose. And while the Chinese government wants to see consolidation, the journal says with the current global economic recession, it will probably not push too hard to drive most of those companies out of business. In Japan, Honda started selling its 2010 Insight Hybrid today. The Detroit News says the new model has a base price of 1.9 million yen or roughly $21,000. When it goes on sale in North America sometime this spring, its starting price is expected to be less than 20 grand. but. That expectation was based on the fact when the yen was much weaker against the dollar. The new Insight delivers 40 miles per gallon in the city and up to 43 on the highway, but we don't know yet if that's the Japanese driving cycle or the EPA rating. As automakers race to develop lithium-ion batteries for hybrid and electric cars, we could be trading our dependency on oil for a dependency on lithium. The New York Times reports that Bolivia has almost half of the world's reserves of lithium and its government is highly protective of them. The country's president, Evo Morales, already nationalized its oil and natural gas industries. And if its lithium production is nationalized there, there are fears it will not get properly developed. Chinese carmaker Geely has received permission from the country's top economic planner to study the acquisition of Volvo. According to Gasgu.com, Geely also got commitments from the Export-Import Bank of China to provide the necessary financing for a possible purchase. Ford has also approached Chinese automakers Cherry and Chongqing Chang'an about buying Volvo. And speaking of Volvo, we'll take a look at one of the advanced safety features debuting on the 2010 Volvo XC60, and we'll look at that right after this. Changing tires out here could be dangerous, but with these tires, I don't need to worry. Bridgestone. On Tuesday's Daily, our West Coast reporter Isaac Bouchard gave us a look at the styling of Volvo's new small premium crossover, the XC60. Today he goes behind the wheel to tell us about the new safety breakthrough the company has included in the vehicle, as well as how it handled those diverse California roads. Not only is the XC60 good looking, but it's really enjoyable to drive as well. It's very quick, thanks to its 281 horsepower turbocharged engine got wonderful steering feel and a well tied down chassis that makes it a lot of fun to drive. But just because Volvo's looked after the driver doesn't mean they've forgotten their long commitment to safety. 
Yeah, the new XC60 has a new unique feature. Uh, it's called City Safety and it's standard. Uh, City Safety is a low speed collision avoidance and mitigation system and it uses uh, laser technology to identify other cars in front of you. And if it, the system senses that this will be a collision and the driver does not take any action to prevent that to happen, then the car will actually break itself, trying to avoid or reduce the speed of impact. And the city safety operates in speeds below 19 miles per hour, or 30 kilometers an hour. This potent combination of good looks and useful, practical, real-world technology should help Volvo reach their modest sales targets of 10 to 15,000 units in their first year of production. For AutoLine Daily, I'm Isaac Bouchard. Volvo just announced pricing for the 2010 XC60 and it comes in at just over $37,000. That includes a variety of standard features like the city safety technology Isaac told us about. By the way, if you'd like to know more about this all new safety feature, you can watch an in-depth Volvo video on the technology at our website. And you'll find a link to that video in today's show notes. And tomorrow, we're hosting a live webcast with Ellen hughes Cromwick the chief economist at Ford. She'll give us the company's forecast for how the economy will do this year and a lot more. That's at noon tomorrow, Eastern Standard Time or 1700 Greenwich Mean Time on both of our websites, AutolineDaily.com or AutolineDetroit.tv. And that's it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow. Visit our website for even more great content all week long. AutoLine Extra, Don's Journal, Podcasts, and even more. So click over and get the inside view at AutoLineDetroit.tv.